Mr. Happy Living here, and I'm happy to be broadcasting from WITV7 in the beautiful Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey friends, I want you to imagine how you'd feel living your life, doing work you love, with people you love, in places you love, and all the while creating something of real value to others. It's what I call a life of significance. And I can tell you, it's a very exciting life. And so, and so can today's guest star, Dr. Charlie Ware. Hey, Charlie, welcome to the Something Significant Show. Well, thank you for having me, Matt. It's a privilege to be here. Love it. Awesome. So just tell our audience, what are you doing these days to leave your mark of significance on the world? Oh, wow. Um, you know, beyond just, you know, seeing daily patients, what I've embarked on is I'm actually uh, building hospitals for sickle cell disease uh, around the world. Uh, we mm-hmm. opened our first one up in Uganda in June 19th, and now I'm working on uh, having four more built by the end of this year as well. What other countries? Uh, Nigeria, Tanzania. Okay. I got a, yeah. I got a good connection in Zimbabwe, if you're uh, looking, looking to get into Zimbabwe. I, I'll try to go there soon as well. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, uh, so let's, I'd like our audience to get to know you through what I call the prism of our happy formula. It's capacity plus purpose equals happy. So let's get started with the first element of the formula. And just share with us, what are your personal practices for building your capacity, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, financial, emotional? In other words, Charlie, what do you do to create the capacity you need to take really good care of yourself and your loved ones and still have plenty left over to give to others? Yeah, perfect. I mean, for, for, for the starters, I always start my day with a, with a daily devotional of some sort of reading um, to really reflect on the purpose that has been designed for me by, by the great designer, you know, um, and then I coupled that with a few moments of just meditating on whatever I've read to make sure that I'm encompassing that. It's not just something I've read and, and, and I study and I, 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 you know, knew it from a knowledge standpoint, but I'm actually allowing my body to synthesize that into my daily practices. And then I, I review my day, my, my previous day, to see where I was lacking and whether I got angry at something or I, I didn't feel mm-hmm. as if I completed something fully with a purpose. And I tried to rewind that and then start my day with a more intense and also a purposeful way of actually looking at what I'm doing. My passion has always been health and, and wellness and helping individuals, you know, virtually, uh, virtually or even just, you know, in, in other countries. So what I've tried to do was try to figure out the best way for me to, to continue that purpose just by maybe is, is an email I send out, is a newsletter, like whatever it is, I have an intentional aspect with it. Um, I don't look at things from a financial standpoint. You know, th- these mm-hmm. hospitals I built, um, whatever profits I made the previous years, I used those profits to, to build these hospitals. So my mm-hmm. purpose has not been about building wealth. It's about building a, a healthcare network of individuals that are needing it and they're sort of lacking for it. So my purpose is just to continue to help as much as I can. And I just keep re- rewinding my days. Like, okay, how, much, how, much, how far did I go from the previous day? As, o- as well as the other purpose I do, is try to make sure that my fears are not guiding my actions. Mm-hmm. So w- w- when I let my fears just sort of melt away, my purpose is actually more so is it's more so enhanced. That's beautiful. And, and you're talking about, I've been thinking about and about the difference between earthly energy and spiritual energy. And what you just talked about almost exclusively was spiritual energy. And the thing about spiritual energy is it's infinite. You, you never run out. The more you give, the more you have of it. And exactly. all this earthly energy, whether it's physical or mental or, you know, exercise or financial, it's finite. And when you use it, it runs out and it has to be replaced. Yes. So it's fascinating that, that you know, I, I think if you can live your life so you can get more and more up into that spiritual area, that's where you start to really have a lot of capacity. Exactly, exactly. And that's the key to like for me was also key to me finding my purpose first and foremost, Mm -hmm. and then having the confidence to continue that journey without saying, okay, I know my purpose now. I don't know what to do with it. You just keep Mm -hmm. going. You just keep going, you know. Awesome. So before we get on to we're going to talk about purpose, but I want to talk a little bit about an amazing capacity builder called Kaizen. It's the it's the Japanese idea that small incremental improvements add up over time to yield great big results. 
And as a personal practice, it means there's always something that you can do better tomorrow than you did today. And it keeps you moving forward every single day. Yeah. So can you share with us, Charlie, how you might apply Kaizen to work on your craft or on a physical skill or a spiritual practice or any other capacity that you're wanting to improve? Yeah, you know, I, I think I sort of alluded to it um, in, my, in my original statement is, is that constant checking in to see, okay, you know, was I happy doing that? And, and, and I, mm. I learned this almost from you as well. Was I happy doing that purpose? Was I fulfilled doing that purpose? And is it was a little incremental, like, you know, okay, yeah, that, that did make me feel happy. You know, did I feel fearful? And how can I turn that fear into happiness? And, and is a practice that, you know, without even knowing I was doing it, I was just slowly just adding more, more happiness to my life. Yeah. Um, we, we had a conversation, I think, what was that, six months ago, we had a conversation about, the, the one third versus uh, two thirds type of lifestyle. And then all of a sudden you want the two thirds to be what you're doing and most of the time, the right. one third, you know, and, and I, I, I heard that, you know, years ago, I was like, wait a minute, but I'm not putting it into practice. So the more I start to flip that over a bit more and, re and remind myself, hey, Matt said. <laughs> That's awesome. And, yeah, yeah. And, and it's one of those things that, like I said, is, is that self-checking? And I think we fear self-checking because we don't want to um, show that we were wrong or incorrect with something. Right. So, you know, and, and I, I'm like, I'm, I used to be the most incorrigible person I, I, I knew. And, but now I'm like, I want people to correct me. I want to be able to self-check myself. Like, wow, yeah. you know, I, I got angry for no reason. You know, that person yesterday, can, can I call that person up and, and say, yep. hey, I'm sorry. Can yep. I apologize? You know, type thing. And it recently happened to me where I got angry with someone. I said, hey, look. I'm sorry, but it's that self-checking on a daily yeah. basis and all that I do, you know, whether it be a, a business deal, like whatever it is I'm doing, I have to continue to make sure that I'm doing it for the purpose of the, the long-term of happiness, not just for myself, but for everyone's involved with it as well. Uh, that's great. Really great. Okay, Charlie, let's discuss element number two of the happy formula. And in my second book, Turning Inspiration into Action, I explore the idea that major life transformations and discovery of purpose often yeah. come from devastation, sadly. Addictions, disease, death, disaster, some big crisis shakes your life. But I've used a happier way and discovered my purpose through inspiration. So the question is, Charlie, was there a specific moment or event or crisis or some inspiration that revealed to you the purpose you were meant to live? You know, uh, I, I would love to sit here and say that, yeah, you know, I have all these tragic things happened to me and I had to fight through it. But no, it was, it, it was something that it started when I was in the third grade and all the way through the sixth grade, probably even, you know, all, all my school career on every report card, my teachers would put not working to full potential. Mm -hmm. Even if I got straight A's, <laughs> not working to full potential. I was like, you know, and, and it, you know, when you're younger, you don't understand what that means. But as mm -hmm. I understood what that meant, I was like, wait a minute, hold up. So for me, it's always been about working to my full potential and no matter what it is. So, so days where I feel like, oh, I'm slacking off, you know, um, I'm like, wait a minute, but did I work to my full potential on all my other projects? I did. So I have that, that, that space to now relax and enjoy myself, mm -hmm. you know, and for a while I didn't allow myself to even do that. So my full potential was always, is, has always now been the purpose of me doing everything I, I, I'm able to do, like my full capacity, you know, and, you know, being, a, being an ex-sports guy like yourself, leaving it all on the field, right? So mm -hmm. I want to be able to leave it all on the field. So I got to work through my full potential in order to do that. Yeah. So now I do think in, in my research of you, you had some health issues as a child. And yes. I think I read that your life trajectory was grim. So yes. tell us tell us about that. And, and what, what was the process where you changed coming out of that? And I know yeah. you were changed at least to some degree because you're focused on that issue like a laser. Yes, so tell yes. us about tell us about that time. You know, and, and part of that, that at full potential was, um, you know, I have sickle cell beta thalassemia. And for those who don't know where it is, sickle cell disease is a genetic red blood cell disease. And thalassemia is also another form of that red blood cell disease. So I got the, the double whammy. Um, early on in the diagnosis, I was how, only diagnosed. How old, how old were you? You, you, you're born with it. So I knew, uh, at, at, a, at a, you know, my mom knew, but she didn't tell me until I was maybe eight or nine years old that okay. I actually had it. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, it's a long sort of story, but, I, you know, being a, being a baseball guy, I love baseball. I played baseball um, all the way up through um, AAA a little bit. Um, uh, 
but uh, I was told in high school I couldn't play baseball any longer because, oh, you have sickle cell. You know, you have sickle cell trait. And, and during that time, they only, they only thought I had to trade. So me knowing my full potential, I'm like, I can do this. I've been doing it all my life. I started playing baseball in our backyard with my mother, not my father, my mother, um, when I was like four or five years old. I never forgot, uh, forget my, my mother actually hit a line drive and, and smashed my nose open. <laughs> You know, go, so, exactly. And, and she was laughing. And so I was a switch hitter, man. So and it was always about that, again, my, my full potential. Um, so when I was told I couldn't do it, and this is the days before the internet, I had to go through all the, the local medical journals I can find and say, hey, look, I can do this. And this is how I'm going to do it. So I wrote out a plan for all my coaches. I also play football uh, and ran track. And I said, this is how I'm going to be able to work out. This is my resting period. This is how much I need to hydrate. I did all this. Wow. without computers and everything else yeah so they're they like oh okay fine 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 and, and, and they allowed me to do it so that was also again the beginning of my research career beginning of me really starting to fight for this um this disease and yes pain crisis um i had mumps measles so my immunity was always lower um mm -hmm. so i had to learn how to treat myself because the only other um, treatment was you know morphine and heavy narcotics I tried that once and I thought I was going to fly to the moon and I didn't like that sensation. So that's when I started on my healthy journey with eating proper exercise, learning how to meditate. You know, that was something, learning how to meditate and pray and, and calm, calm my body down and de-stress myself naturally were ways I learned how to do that and, and treat myself. And so you developed a, a cure or tell, tell us about what you developed that helps with sickle cell. Yeah. So um, part of my natural journey was uh, I'm really trying to figure it out. My grandfather's Native American. Um, so he taught me all these natural ways to treat mm. anything, headaches, whatever, whatever. I'm going to travel to Pequot. So, you know, I, I, I'm we registered. But anyway, um, so that's why we got into herbs and natural things. And I created a supplement called Evenflow that we've had clinically trialed. And, you know, the research is actually in several journals how we were able to decrease the sickling rate of sickle cell disease, increase the hemoglobin levels, uh, decrease pain crisis, um, just a whole host of things that, you know, really is damaging to the body with this disease. Um, I've traveled all over the world. I fought mixed martial arts. Um, I've done so many crazy things and, you know, by the grace of God and also you know, this supplement been, been fine. And now that, that's, that's sort of the jump off for the building of the hospitals because largely around the world, this disease you know, isn't treated efficiently or effectively. Mm. Um, there is seriously no hospital in the world that's dedicated only to sickle cell disease, except for now ours that, that, that we open up in Uganda and hopefully four more by the end of this year um, that we will hopefully will be breaking ground on too. That's, that's really awesome. And you gave me goosebumps when you said your grandfather is Native American. And I think, you know, we, all of us really are put on this planet for a reason. Sometimes we can't figure it out. But when I now I know that background about you, what you're doing today, it makes perfect sense. And you're kind of the only person that could be doing it. Yeah. 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 You know, it, it's, it's funny, man. I used to question myself. I used to I used to look at my hands like, like why? Like, 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 why me? Like, like, why do I have why do I have? this ability to to do these things and find inf this information and I stop asking why and start asking how can I help more that's it how can I and, just help more yeah and, and it could be you know the ability to play music it could be the ability to fix a car it could be the ability to write you know it, it's all different and none of it's I've been working on this with my my youngest daughter she is an amazing artist but mm -hmm. she doesn't think she is but she does stuff and it's just like when she says what's well, that's no big deal and it's like what you say, it's no, you can just do this stuff. It's easy for you. I couldn't do what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. Well, Charlie, yeah, let's take a commercial break because I want to tell everyone about three things. An online course that helps people discover their purpose and then design their life around it and how they can save a hundred bucks on the enrollment fee. <music> Mr. Happy Living here. I love good things made for good people. That's why I love Happy Living's online e-course. It's an eight week long deep dive into you and the inspired life you want to live. The life you were put here on this earth to live. The one that you and only you can live. Eight weeks of lectures and ideas and topics and supporting materials 
and powerful self-improvement tools, all designed for you. All designed to help you create the tools and the power and the confidence you need to discover your purpose and to discover the life you were meant to live and to feel incredibly inspired and motivated to decide you will live your life to its fullest. It's all designed to help you create the unique and distinct philosophy of you and your inspired life. Go to happyliving.com, select our e-course, and save a hundred bucks with promo code WITV7. And for every enrollment, I'll donate another hundred bucks to WITV7. For $300 in about 30 hours, I promise you'll never, ever be the same again. And we're back. And this is Something Significant. And I am Matt Gersper. Hey, friends, we created our e-course just for you to help you create the space you need to become self-inspired, to achieve your own greatness as you define it, and to leave your very own mark of significance on the world. That's right. Eight weeks from today, we could be celebrating a new you. But for now, let's get back to our guest star, Dr. Charlie Ware. And Charlie, I recently stumbled upon an article called The Science Behind the Power of Giving. Mm. And it seems that the act of giving itself can be a gateway to discovering your reason for being on this planet. It says compelling scientific data supports the notion that giving one's time, talents, and treasures is a powerful pathway to finding purpose, transcending difficulties, and finding fulfillment and meaning in life. So I've updated our formula. Capacity plus purpose plus giving equals really happy. Yeah. So, so what do you think, Charlie? Has giving your time, your talent, your treasures, has that been a powerful pathway for you to discover your purpose and transcend difficulties in your life and bring about fulfillment and meaning? By and large, by and large. You know, the it's, it's, it's like we discussed earlier in, in the segment, you know, the profits I've made from my supplement company, I've used to build um, the, these facilities around the world. Um, and could I buy a bigger house? Of course I could. Could I buy a, a bigger car? And, it, you know, I, I love Italian shoes. Could I buy more mm. of them? Of course. <laughs> but me giving and, and then being able to, to video chat with some of the patients that go to these hospitals and are getting relief or or getting a, a email from a parent that I've never met, but they've heard my name and they're just praising the work that we're doing is something that I just cannot describe. It's not an ego boost. It, it, it doesn't feed my ego. It feeds my soul to actually yeah. do more. Yeah. It shows me that I'm on the right track. I'm doing my purpose. Um, so it, does, it make, does it make me happy? No, it brings so much joy to my life yeah. that, you know, that, that, I know why I wake up every morning. I know why I work until, you know, seven, eight o'clock at night and take phone calls and then, you know, go out in the backyard with my son and play ping pong until like nine o'clock at night. It's because of the fact that I'm, I'm doing something that is not just for me, mm -hmm. not just for my own serving, it's for those that cannot do for themselves. So that brings me so much joy to have the ability to do that. Yeah, that's great. And that, that takes me to this, this next section, which is, Okay, that's the science. Giving actually does all this for you. But I've experienced how the real magic of life comes from the fourth element of significance, which is, you're, ta you're talking all around it, doing work that creates value for others. The real magic of life comes not from getting more, as you've said, but from giving more. But it's not just the giving that's magical. And what I've been learning is, it's giving from living in your purpose. That's where the magic is. So. For example, if you were making more money and then just giving money away for, to a charitable organization, that would make you feel good. But when you're giving from living in your purpose, from doing that thing that God's created for you to do, when, and I got a quote from a, from a customer, 
here. It says, Dr. Charlie Ware has become my superhero. He was honest with me from the start and I couldn't be happier to have him on my team to get through many of the ins and outs my body has been through as a professional dancer. Dr. Ware has truly changed my life. Aside from treating me, he's also taking great care of everyone I've recommended to him. So how does it feel when you're in your purpose and then you're bringing that value to others? Talk about the level of joy that brings you. The difference I mean, it, between other giving and that kind of giving. Um, it, it actually brings tears to my eyes because these are things that, like we said, it's so easy for me to do it because I have a, a, a passion to help. But to hear it is, is I, I used to like hate compliments. So now when I hear, I'm like, wow. So that late night, five years ago, that you were up studying to make sure that you were able to treat these patients efficiently is paying off, not for yourself, but for them. Mm -hmm. They're able to live such a much more fulfilled life. Um, and then the, the, the funny thing is, I, I used to give to charities all the time, and it got to the point where I was like, why am I giving to, uh, to a charity that I would never meet those individuals, and are they really using their money efficiently? Mm -hmm. So can I now start to use my own money to do the things that I can see that we're making uh, headway in with my mm -hmm. own purpose and passion? Mm -hmm. So that was one reason why I shifted into doing all that. So when I hear that quote, and then when I see what I do on a daily basis, it is, is, I mean, I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm so blessed to be able to do it. Yeah, I'm just incredibly blessed to do it because it's not about me. It's about the yep. gifts that I've been given, yep. you know, by the creator to be able to share with each other so we can connect on that level. Yep. And it's such a connection that, I mean, it's such a spiritual connection that is it's amazing. And, and, and I feel just blessed to be able to actually have that. Beautiful. We're back into that spiritual energy. It, it's infinite. Yeah. It's infinite, so, man. And what's, what I've been finding out, so purpose and giving makes this great, big, happy circle. Yeah. Giving your time and talents and treasures is a powerful pathway to finding your purpose. And giving from living in your purpose brings about profound joy to your life. So yeah. giving leads to purpose and giving from purpose leads to joy. How beautiful is that? Exactly. Exactly. And for me, that's the great, big, amazing magic of the happy formula. I'll say it again. Capacity plus purpose plus giving equals happy to the third power. And mm -hmm. that's really, truly, deeply happy. Yes. And that explains why Charlie Ware is so damn happy. Isn't that right, Charlie? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I mean it's funny because um, everyone says, you, you're always smiling. I'm like, why shouldn't I be smiling? Mm-hmm. Why should not be smiling? I'm, I'm able to, I mean, I mean, it, it's so many individuals that, um, and I meet them all the time, you know, multimillionaires, billionaires even, that are so unhappy. Yeah, They're so just full of uh, disease and sickness and illnesses because of the fact that they are not happy and they would never be happy because they're focusing mm -hmm. on the wrong thing. Yes, they, they, they could write a check for a million dollars or $10 million if they yeah. wanted to. And yeah, whatever. But when they're using their purpose, what is their purpose? And they're too afraid to find that. So I'm, I'm, I'm privileged and blessed to be able to find my, my, my purpose and to be able to use that on a daily basis. Yeah. I mean, why can't I smile about that? People said <laughs> the same thing about me as a kid. You're always smiling. What's the matter with you, boy? Yep. So yep. this has been great. Let's wrap things up with a lightning round. I love, to I love quotes. So I like reading my favorite ones. And then have you respond to us telling what it means to you and just, you know, pretty quick, give us the first thing that comes to your mind. Gotcha. This one's from Albert Einstein. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used to create them. Archaic. I mean, it is, is, is uh, we too, we're too comfortable with being archaic. And Albert Einstein was all, he's much more than a, a physicist. He was a philosopher and, mm -hmm. and a guru. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Okay, this is from Lao Tzu. To the giver comes the fullness of life. To the taker, just an empty hand. That's my daily mantra. You know, um, it's, it's a Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 23 has the same like, type of um, wording inside there. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's my daily I'm living right there. I love it. it. It warms my heart to actually just hear that and live that out. Awesome. This is one from my past. Other people's opinion of you 
is none of your business. Of course not. Of course not. It, it, it's, it's funny because I, I think 90, 99% of us, when we hear a bad comment that someone's made about us, we, we quickly want to defend that. Mm -hmm. But why defend something that does not affect you? They're only words that someone else is trying to arouse in you. So it, 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 as I always say, it's just an enemy trying to douse the, uh, the potential that you have in yourself. So just yeah. keep moving forward. Smile, love, and still love them. Love them back. Um, yes, from Helen Keller, security is mostly a superstition. It does not exist in nature. Exactly. Sorry, it, it's, it don't, not, not even gravity is certain. So long story short, I, I, I've loved this quote by Helen Keller for years and years and years. And it's something I, I, I actually had this on my wall, by the way. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I, I so, think I mean, we were connected at some time in our past, Charlie. <laughs> I'm not quite sure, but it seems like maybe we were. Yes, definitely, definitely. I mean, it, it's, it's something about security that uh, too many individuals want security, but I have a phrase that I like to be comfortably uncomfortable at all times. And which is great. And the, the security that we cling to is an illusion in the first place. Exactly. Oh, I'd never be an entrepreneur because, you know, I work for a big company and, and now I'm safe with this big corporation until you get laid off. Right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay. The last exactly. one, this is the one, this is the show anchor quote from Goff. Whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. Yeah. You know, uh, what, what that means to me is the fact that my potential that that that, that eight-year-old kid that saw it on, on his on, on his uh a report card is still living that right now mm. to use my full potential not tomorrow not put it off tomorrow but mm. today so i can actually continue to do my purpose for not me but for those who need it more than i do fantastic all right now folks it's your turn if you can hear my voice and you were inspired by today's show, as I was with Charlie Ware, please bring some love to our wonderful broadcast team and donate what you can to WITV7. They're a 501c3 charity on a mission to educate, empower, and encourage. They do good works with your kindness. Charlie, I love your mission to revolutionize how people understand their bodies, their health, and their ability to heal with the right kind of nutrition and lifestyle choices. And I admire how for more than two decades now, you've remained dedicated to finding or developing the most worthwhile ways that you can help underserved populations. It's awesome, my friend. And I wanna thank you for sharing your powerful voice on our show. Thank you, Matt. It was a beautiful opportunity and thank you for all that you do. Your, your happiness, is something that is infectious and I love being in the presence of it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Would you uh, take a minute or two and share any parting remarks you'd like to leave with our audience? Yes, I mean, um, the, the, the journey that I've gone on is not a unique one in my opinion. It's something that once we all understand that we have a purpose and fear is only a design of our own minds to keep us from that purpose, we can actually get over any hurdle. Mm -hmm. um, the fear of asking for help, the fear of failing, the fear of you know lack is something that we all should put on a, uh, on a piece of paper and burn up because that's how, how fast it can leave our thought process and allow us to really lead, live in our full potential. Happiness is something that for me is something that I, I love, I live for, and joy is, is always my goal. And that's the ultimate happiness. All the work that I've done in, in Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, all parts of Africa, all parts of, of the Americas and also in Europe, has always been something that has been a passion of mine. And I encourage each individual to work from a passionate standpoint to find their purpose. Is the thing that loves that, that I fall in love with on a daily basis. The reason why I wake up in love with who I am, and also the reason why I wake up in love with the, the average individual I meet on the street as well. So when you find that, live it with a full potential. And thank you for, for joining me on this journey. Uh, fantastic, Charlie. Thank you. And I also want to thank WITV7 for promoting and hosting our show so we can keep interviewing inspiring guests like Charlie and reaching folks like you out there ready to create your own extraordinary lives. 
a special thank you to our sponsors, The Philosophy of You and Your Inspired Life and Happy Living. Remember, I'll donate 100 bucks for each and every enrollment using promo code WITV7. So tell all your friends, just go to happyliving.com, select our e-course, and enroll together as a group. And most especially, thank you viewers and listeners. You'll find links to websites and social media and all things Dr. Charlie Ware. Find him, friend him, join his inner circle, and get his free paper about eight easy to find herbs that'll transform your health. It's all on his website, drcharlieware.com. That's all one word, drcharlieware.com. From me to you, dear friends, I love you and I want you to be happy. I want your, you to live your life to its fullest, to believe as I do that a better self is always possible today and every day for the rest of our lives. I hope you're feeling motivated and super confident and really bold too, and ready to take action, to start moving along your path, the one waiting for you, because that's where you're gonna make your mark of significance on the world. And the world needs to hear from you. Till next time, I'm Matt Gersper. You are awesome. And this is the Something Significant Show. Awesome. And we're out.